Welcome to another document platform screencast. Uh, in this screencast I'm going to go through the process of installing VMware Workstation on this Windows 8 laptop. Uh, I'm doing this uh, so that I can uh, then run some additional screencasts in which I will create uh, some WML uh, print platform uh, uh, virtual machines. So, uh, prior to starting this screencast, I went to the VMware website, um, and let's just open that now, um, and I went and uh, searched up VMware Workstation, uh, and I landed on this one, I think, Try Workstation, um, and I signed up for an evaluation account, and uh, I've downloaded a 30-day uh, a trial. Uh, it's about a 400 megabyte uh, download, and um, I've got 30 days to uh, to make use of it. Um, so let's find out where I downloaded it to. Uh, it should be in here. Uh, there it is, all 425 megabytes of it there. Um, so I'm going to double click that. Uh, yep, yeah, I'll allow that to make changes to my computer. And here it goes. Okay, let's go install my system. I'll choose the typical features. Uh, I'll let it place it where it wants to place it. Uh, I won't bother checking for updates uh, every time it starts because it's only an evaluation and I, I'll be taking it away, taking it off the machine when I finish with it. Um, I'll just leave that unchecked. Um, uh, yeah, you can put some shortcuts in there, that's okay. Uh, and let's go ahead and let it install. I've not been through this process uh, yet, so I'm not actually sure how long it's going to take. It could take a little while, given it's a fairly large uh, installation. I suspect also that I'll have to restart the machine at some point. Um, so we may have to uh, 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 stop this uh, screencast and maybe pick up in a part two. Um, okay. Just for information, this is this is the laptop I've got here is a, a Lenovo ThinkPad T61, so it's a few years old. Um, as you can see, I'm running Windows 8 on it, which I installed just to uh, to see what it was like. Really, um, my verdict is it's it's more or less like Windows 7, but kind of a bit worse because the start menu disappeared and uh, you know the start menu was okay it, it worked fine <laughs> so uh, but it, you know it, it does the job Up till now I've used uh, the uh, free VMware server product which has been discontinued for, uh, for a year or two now. Um, that was, well that was actually a great little uh, product but uh, I guess not so great for VMware because it provided what exactly what I needed which was to run a number of virtual machines on a laptop or a desktop PC and, uh, and it was a free, a free download and uh, a free product. Um, uh, VMware Workstation uh, obviously is not a not a free product but I, I'm thinking it's going to be similar to VMware server in what it provides um, uh, the cost of it is about £160 um, which if you've got a use for it is, is, a, is a reasonable price oh, some free BSD tools in there Linux tools. I guess these must be tools for running the uh, the guest the guest machines in. All the WML document platform uh, virtual machines are little Linux uh, systems, 32-bit Linux systems. They're very small. The um, the VMware disk files are only about 45 to 50 megabytes in size, so it's. Once you've got VMware installed, it's a very quick process to um, 
install and set up uh, each uh, WML uh, virtual print appliance. Um, of course, if you prefer uh, to use a free hypervisor, um, a WML document platform systems will also run on Linux KVM, um, and I'll uh, I'll do another screencast at a later date um, on how to uh, set up and install uh, Linux KVM on Ubuntu Linux. Um, but now we've got to the license key point, so let's uh, let's move. Let's get this license key installed. I'll copy that one. Switch here. That's it. Okay, we're in good shape. So we've got workstation installed. Do we have to do a restart? Hmm, nothing doing. Let's see if it's installed. Okay, I don't know if you'll see the start menu here. Um, <coughs> there's VMware Player, VMware Workstation. Okay, now I'm uh, not sure where I am because I've not used this product before, so let's just see if we can... Uh, where are we going to end up here? Here it is. Okay, license agreement. Yes, I'll accept that. I've got 30 days. Uh, okay, so here we are. So I want to... Uh, let's see, have I got uh, a VMDK that I can use here? Let's have a look. Doesn't look like it. OK, I'm going to pause this screencast and get myself a VMDK and then we can create a virtual machine. OK, I'm back. <coughs> so I now have a uh, virtual machine disk image file. This is uh, uh, a, P a, pen uh, a PDF plus image. Uh, you can see the, the file now here. It's quite long. It's got the uh, WML PP, uh, P plus for PDF plus, VMware to say that it's a VMware image. Uh, the SATA bit is uh, uh, it just means that it's got it's expecting SATA disks. Um, uh, the tree that it comes from, the build tree, and then the date is in there. So there's our disk image file as uh, as can be downloaded from um, our uh, our website. So I'm going to make a copy of that file and I'm going to paste a copy um, and I'm going to rename that copy. I think I was going to rename it. No, I think I used the wrong thing there. Rename. Okay. I'm going to call this P plus one. The reason I've made a copy of the original is because the VMware, this is going to be the disk of the VMware machine, and um, the, um, the VMware machine will change the contents of that disk. So if I keep a copy of the original over here, um, I can create a new. Um, virtual machine later on uh, I can create additional virtual machines so I'm going to go back to VMware workstation I'm going to click on create a new virtual machine and I'm going to choose custom okay that's very important to choose custom um, because it gives us the option to choose the disk file um, I can leave the har hardware compatibility at the default there and move on uh, it's I'll install the operating system later that's the right choice at this point I move on next. Um, I will choose Linux, and uh, from this drop down where you've got heaps of uh, options, if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see other Linux 2.6.x kernel is the one that you want for a WML document platform product. Um, I'll give it a name. PDF plus one will do us. Uh, I could choose uh, some other location for it to go but that's okay by default. Uh, I can move on now. Uh, I'll give it one processor, that's fine. Uh, 256 megabytes of RAM is enough in this case. Um, and then I get a choice about the network connection. Um, I can either use a, a, a bridged networking system 
um, so it would just it would join on to my local network. Uh, network address translation um, is uh, selected first, but I'm going to choose host only networking here. That that puts that will put my virtual machine on a a little uh, um, a sort of private network on this laptop. Um, for real world use, typically you'll use bridged networking. That's kind of the most useful feature if you're actually going to be using the the um, the virtual machine in production. Okay, I'll leave the uh, SCSI controller on the recommended LSI logic, um, which is fine, and I'm going to choose uh, use an existing virtual disk here. So I do that, and it's going to give me. Uh, I need to go and browse for the disk file. So it's on my desktop. Oh, that's what I'm looking at. Here it is, P plus one. Use that one. Okay, it it's um the VMDK disk format which we create um is a slightly older format. Um so uh, it doesn't really matter whether we keep the existing or convert it. Um, I'll allow it to be converted here. Um, and um, it's telling me it's ready to create the virtual machine. So let's go ahead and do that. Here it is. Uh, I'm going to power it on now. OK. And here it comes. There it is. It's booting. And there you have the console. The um, it's a it has a just a console uh, a, a non graphical graphical console. Uh, all the interaction with uh, a PDF plus, um, like any of our systems, is through the web interface. So we see we've got an internet address here. Um, so I'm going to um, I can tell VMware that I finished installing the operating system because it was already installed. Um, and I can now open a browser and just take a look at the uh, web interface. So, 192.168.29.129. Here we go. And there's our interface. Put in the default password, which is password. And there we have a newly installed system. Um, and uh, all I can finish up with now is to say uh, thank you for uh, watching this rather long screencast. Um, for more information, you can uh, find out about our products at wmltd.co.uk. And uh, so thanks again for watching.